Hey, good Wednesday morning, everybody. BAMWX.com, meteorologist Brett Waltz here. We have a lot to talk about today. Anything from typhoons uh, to increasing dry concerns across western portions of the agriculture belt and an updated look at corn and soybean analogs as we go into the rest of this year and what those look like from a yield perspective based off of some of the weather data and information that we're looking at. And if you're new to weather yield, that's exactly what we talk about. We talk about weather. We talk about the potential impact in terms of agriculture uh, across really much of the primary growing regions for the United States and into parts of Canada. Uh, to give you a little bit of an overview of what we're going to be talking about today, we're keeping an eye on some severe weather threats across parts of the Midwest as we work to next week. A typhoon in the Western Pacific likely going to have implications on the pattern across the United States as we work into early August. Subsequently, drier risk increasing across Western Ag Belt regions, a hotter pattern developing. And we also want to talk about updated signals for hurricane season for fall. And again, those yield analogs based off of some of our, our weather data and information that we've been looking at uh, at the end of this video. So be sure to hang around for that. Uh, if you're not familiar with BAMWX.com, first time watching the video, be sure to scan that QR code, get some more information. We have a ton of different services and products that we can help you all out with, would be more than happy to help. So again, scan that QR code for some more information. And, and on that note, also want to uh, be sure to give a shout out to our brand new partner of BAM Weather Market Minute. They are a commodity-based newsletter. They provide grain price advice, market commentary, uh, in-depth market analysis. I think it's a, a really good partnership uh, given we provide a, a lot of weather information uh, for people to kind of make decisions off of. Uh, this is an organization that then uh, can provide buy and sell signals, marketing plans, and they'll be utilizing some of our weather information in their reports. Uh, be sure to scan the QR code if you're interested, want to learn more about them, tell them that BAMWX sent you. Uh, while we have a second, real quick, and then I'll get into the forecast, I promise it's going to be a good one today. We have a lot to talk about. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you're watching us on the YouTube channel, go to uh, BAMWX.com uh, or go to our channel at BAMWX.com. Click the subscribe button. We do these updates weekly, along with some other impactful weather updates, tropical weather updates, and then uh, weather education reels that we do on Thursdays on our channel. So uh, be sure to go there and subscribe. Of course, all of our best details, all of our greatest details are on our BAMWX.com website or our Clarity Weather platform, which many of you may be watching through today. Uh, let's start out with rainfall the past seven days because overall past seven days guys been pretty dry uh, for many areas across uh, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. Uh, the rainfall has been very very hit or miss in nature. There have certainly been some spots that have cashed in. Uh, we had some rain and storms across parts of Minnesota and into Iowa yesterday dropped some decent rain uh, but even amid that there were spots that got really completely skipped over. And so uh, the core of the rain the past seven days or so has been south. You can really see where the more widespread rains have set up. Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, Arkansas, southern Missouri, Oklahoma, uh, Virginia, North Carolina. These are these have been the areas that have been most consistently wet over the past seven days. If we look at the past 14 days, I uh, still have some of the barrels influence in this observation. That'll go away tomorrow. I, I want to draw your attention, though, to areas that have overall been pretty dry the past 14 days. Certainly, there have been some spots that have gotten lucky and cashed in, but uh, much of the plains, really, the past 14 days, while it hasn't been super warm, have been drier than normal, and I think that's an important area to watch moving forward. This is an area that, as we kind of look ahead at the forecast, uh, still leaning drier than normal. Uh, main rain chances over the next seven days with some of the these models that we've been looking at are, are a little bit further to the east. And, and so I think that the western plains and the plains in general are probably a spot of interest to keep an eye on over the next couple of weeks. In terms of rainfall across the eastern ag belt, the midwest, the next seven days, there are some pretty big model differences. And one of the things that we like to kind of break down is uh, why are there differences and, and what model do we 
actually end up favoring. And so top left here is the American model. Bottom right is the European model. The American model is quite a bit lighter with precipitation as a whole across the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. The European model is very, very aggressive with heavier rain chances and an inch plus of rain really across eastern Iowa, eastern Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and into Kentucky. And so some pretty big differences here the next seven days. Looking at just the overall pattern ahead, as we work into early next week, there is certainly support early to mid next week, I would say, for what we call northwest flow and storm clusters. Not a terribly dissimilar pattern to what produced a derecho earlier last week. Doesn't mean that we're going to see a repeat of that. It's not 100% off the table either. Based off of that, I think that the American data is too dry over the next seven days, especially across Iowa, southern Minnesota, Illinois, and into parts of Indiana. Now, I do think that the European model is a little bit too aggressive with rains later this weekend into Monday uh, across parts of the Ohio Valley with what we call an upper level low, a slow moving little storm system. And, and so I think ideally a blend of these two ideas would be better. You know, I would kind of take the American data here and say there's probably going to be some locally higher totals in here, but it may not end up as widespread as what the European model has. Uh, we just take a look at what we ultimately ended up favoring. That's exactly what we drew here on our week one rainfall map, map for the next seven days. You can see though, further west you go the drier the risks are going to be. That theme remains into the week two time frame. And if anything, I think late week two, there's the potential that some dryness could actually expand a little bit further east. But I think especially early in this week two period, as we start out August, probably going to be some decent rain and storm chances across the Great Lakes, the upper Midwest, and into parts of the Ohio Valley, increasingly dry further off to the west. And that's important because temperatures are going to be heating up as well. We start out cooler the next several days across the uh, eastern portions of the Ag Belt down to the southeast U.S., but you can see warmer than normal temperatures really beginning to return across the western plains into the weekend and into early next week, and then that enhances and grows in a more widespread fashion really for much of the central part of the country into the Canadian prairies as we work into the first seven days of August. In fact, some areas across the western plains averaging out 8 to 12 degrees hotter than normal as we go throughout the first week of August. And I think some of that is being amplified by this typhoon that has developed uh, in the western Pacific. Right now, this typhoon is pretty much stalled out. Pretty a devastating situation here for Taiwan as it's just stalled out off the east coast uh, of that country there. It will eventually continue to kind of move west into China. When this happens, when you get this type of a track, it tends to support heat five to 10 days later in the United States. And I think that's what the model data is seeing. Uh, I really don't see any reason to disagree with a hot pattern the first eh, third or so of August, pretty consistently across the central part of the United States. If you take a look at what the lingering impacts of that typhoon are, would indicate that the pattern lingers hotter than normal all the way really through the second week of August. And so pretty good signals here ahead of a hotter than normal pattern setting up and lingering around through the first third to maybe even half of the month of August. Now, as this heat builds, that's where you're going to initially get the severe weather threats to start to develop. I want to talk about that. Uh, looking at the upper level setup, I see a storm track as we work into next week from maybe South Dakota, but then especially Southern Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. Wouldn't even be shocked if at times you could get some activity down into parts of Missouri as well. Uh, just looking at the setup, uh, fr from a historical standpoint, what's happened in the past in these types of setups, I'd be keeping an eye on the area in red here next Monday to Thursday, maybe even next Friday, uh, for the potential for severe storm cluster threats. Uh, certainly these can put down some rain. I know some areas maybe need some rain uh, and could also produce wind damage threats as well. Something we're going to need to eye very, very carefully as we work into next week. I think in general, related to this, the most active period is likely the six to 10 day time frame, kind of the 28th to the 2nd uh, of August. So 28th of July to 2nd of August. You can see the divide though, and I wanna bring up this point. I think generally, the further west you go, the drier you're going to be, the further east you go, the more rain opportunity you're going to have. I would say overall, while it's going to be warmer than normal, we continue to get timely rains across eastern portions of the Ag Belt. While further west, 
a hotter and a drier pattern is setting up. Now, I do think at times the hotter and drier risk can expand as we go late in this time frame, kind of the third to the eighth of the month. I think the cluster threats could maybe potentially shift a little bit further to the north for a time. And you could expand some dryness more into Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, and into parts of Missouri. Does it consistently do this over the next two, three, four weeks? I don't necessarily think that's the case, but at times hotter and drier risk can expand. And you can see that here on the EPS data, trying to bring in some below normal precipitation threats a little bit further east as we close out the week two time frame. Again, I don't necessarily think this is a locked in pattern, but it wouldn't 100% shock me if at times there can be some drier periods into the Midwest. In terms of just the next two plus weeks, we drew a map here to give you an idea of just uh, how everything averages out. The further south and east you go, the more active it's going to be overall and the less hot it's going to be versus normal. The further west you go, get into this red area, parts of South Dakota, North Dakota, Kansas, uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma, hotter than normal pattern, a drier than normal pattern. If you're in that yellow area, it's not dry, but I think that the rain and storm opportunities are, are messy. It means that some areas can miss out, will also be a hotter than normal pattern, but still a lot of those areas get some timely rains. Which then begs the question, how long does this overall pattern, and this hotter pattern as a whole, how long does it last? Uh, taking a look at, at a combination of our overall analogs for August and some tropical forcing analogs, the signal here is for really heat to continue through much of the month of August. Could potentially see the core of it try to shift a little bit further east with time. I think especially if we start getting hurricane activity in the Gulf of Mexico, that's going to be possible. Uh, but generally, I think that uh, it's a hotter than normal pattern much of August and a, a drier west pattern and a wetter east pattern, especially if we can start to get some tropical activity to come up through the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, if we take a look at our weeks three and four forecast, this is August 6th to 19th. You can see here overall continuing to favor much above normal temperatures across the northern tier of the U.S. with a more active pattern north and east drier pattern the further west that you go. Uh, specifically kind of want to focus on the plains here for a second mountain west. Much below normal precipitation at times drier risk expanding east. If we take a look at our soil moisture indicators right now it's drier across the lower Ohio Valley. This is an area I think there can be some improvement. While I think this area in here hotter and drier moving forward could see some worsening of drought conditions. If we take a look at the current drought monitor I could see the risk over the coming weeks for some drought expansion a little bit further off to the east, maybe bringing in more abnormally dry to moderate drought conditions into more of North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and into parts of Kansas. So again, the western belt, some drier risk, maybe some drier conditions developing over the next few weeks. Uh, looking out ahead, I think one big factor that we're going to have to monitor more and more closely the further into August that we go is tropical activity. The latest EPS data trying to start to indicate some tropical disturbances developing in the Gulf of Mexico or in the Atlantic as we close out the first week of August into the second week of August. Based off the signals that I'm seeing right now, uh, mid to late August and beyond, I think a very active tropical track from the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico likely sets up. I think there can also be a secondary track out to sea in the Atlantic Ocean. This will certainly have implications on the pattern in the United States. Typically, this western track tends to favor hotter risk in the central U.S. and drier risk as well, depending on where exactly these systems end up going. Do they curve up north? Do they stay in the Gulf of Mexico? Will be something to watch as we roll things forward. Uh, before we go, guys, I do want to give a little bit of an update on harvest weather. And I want to start out with the back end of the growing season and kind of starting into harvest season, August and into September. Uh, these are analogs, kind of a mix of our August analogs and our fall analogs as a whole. Overall, the signal August and September is a hot one across the north central part of the country. I think we're already seeing that set up. And I think that it overall continues with the divide of more rain opportunities east and drier risks further to the north and to the west. Could even be into September some drier risk across parts of Iowa and into Minnesota. Something to keep in mind from maybe a soybean perspective as well. Uh, we take a look at what these analogs look like as we go throughout our fall months, September, October, November. 
overall continues with the theme of a warmer than normal pattern. I do think though, the further we go into this time frame, into the, the fall months, we can start to see some relief, see more precipitation opportunities in here across the northwestern plains. Now, I think perhaps the only downside to that is does it come right as people are harvesting and, and limit dry time? It's not 100% out of the question October and into November with drier risk developing further down to the south and to the east. With all that in mind, uh, kind of combined the ideas here, August and into fall, of our neutral Enzo analogs right now, we're not in a La Nina yet. The development on that has slowed. Could still potentially get there late fall into winter. Uh, but I think for this perspective, for these analogs, for yields, these neutral ones are probably going to be a little bit better. Uh, latest update factoring in a couple of other analogs in here, plus 1.6 versus trend line. Most of these are at or above trend line, guys, in terms of corn. Now, for soybeans, Notice a couple of interesting things. A couple of years in here, a little bit lower than normal. 2003, much below normal. 2013, a little bit below normal with soybean yields. And these were drier yields, or drier year, years, excuse me, uh, across the Midwest in August and September. And so I, I think that that is something to keep in mind, that maybe our soybean yields are not quite as favorable because of the drier end of the season across parts of the plains and maybe at times bleeding into the Midwest. There are certainly still some pretty good years in here. And, and given how the season has started, you know, I think it'll be challenging to get a 2003 type of a look from a weather perspective. Uh, but, you know, with a drier end of the season, maybe it takes off kind of the, the top end potential of soybean yields. Uh, something to keep in mind, uh, given the hotter signals ahead and some of the drier signals, especially the further west that you go in the forecast over the next month or two. Uh, guys, that's all that I have for today. I uh, hope that you enjoyed watching this. Again, be sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. We do these weather yield updates every Wednesday morning. Um, and again, if you want more information on our platform, our more detailed forecasts, our daily updates, scan the QR code there. We'd be more than happy to help you out. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.